Hey everyone, my name is Pascal Robert from RC Creation. A lot of people actually got a Yamaha Viper this year, especially since here in Canada it's available at Canadian Tire for a very good price. So I decided to pick one up for myself and I decided I was going to do a full on video on how to install my kit on it because so far I only have a video on the RMK. It's a little more complicated on the RMK so it shouldn't be too much of a problem for a Yamaha Viper but since so many people actually got a kit I decided I was going to make a video on the Yamaha. First step is actually very simple it's just to take this snowmobile out of the box and take every single screw we can see out of it. We will need the screws later so keep all of them but for now you just see a screw and take it off. If you need to know what the list of parts is, it's available under the upgrade kit for Polaris Skidoo and Yamaha on my website. Most of that stuff you can get it at any hobby shops. Uh, stuff like the bearings, uh, colors, they're Dubro colors by the way. So what you'll need for this is two 6x13x5 bearings and two 12x18x4. Of course you need our millimeters. 4 1 8 color from Dubro. You'll also need a set of 3 millimeter rod or 1 8 basically aluminum or brass or even stainless if you can find some. M3 screws, stainless of course, you don't want it to rust. A 56 tooth uh, spur gear from Traxxas and a 14 to 20 tooth pinion gear again from Traxxas. 16 gauge galvanized wire, uh, you can get it at most farm supplies or even on Amazon if you feel like it. Free, plenty self explanatory. Just about any 540 size speed controller and motor combo will work. They don't need to ask me what I'm using, anything will work. You also need a cooler for the motor, most likely, because it gets pretty toasty in there. A mini servo, uh, battery, and transmitters, of course. First step is actually pretty simple, you need to make room for the new parts. Uh, one of the parts that requires the most amount of uh, work is actually you need to enlarge where the bearing goes because otherwise it's gonna rub against the plastic and it, you know, no really good. There's a few standoff you'll need to take, but you don't need to take every single one out. Actually you need some of them, so don't take more than you actually need. Here I just want a bit of room to uh, put my speed controller there, so that's why I'm picking it off. I'm just trying to put the parts in just a rough bit, see what it does. You'll likely need to enlarge the holes if you're using M3 screws. If you use the standard screws, you won't need to, but if you use M3, which I do recommend you do, you'll need to enlarge them with a 764 bit. Make sure it's very, very lined up. You don't want it to wobble around. Now the drill bit I'm using over here is a 15 64th uh, or roughly 6mm. Usually I'm using a screwdriver for this, but the drill bit is actually a much better idea for this. Pretty tough though, you'll need to uh, work your way to actually use it. like a glove. Oh yeah! You just want to make sure the parts fit nicely together nothing binds or it's too difficult to put together because you're most likely going to have to put it on and off a couple of times to make sure everything is working before you put it in.
that bearing didn't boil and go in there. <laughs> Jeez, he needs to be just about flat. making sure everything's turning nicely for now, but I'm going to have to take it off to add the bearings. Now this is going to be the hardest part. It's actually trying to make sure everything lines up so you could put the bearings in place. And it's, it's a tough part. But you can get it, it's just a matter of taking your time and do it carefully, not to break anything. Now the first time I put these screws in place, I put a one that was a little too low and it was way too long so i decided to take it off it doesn't really need to have any screws there but it's good to have maybe one that's not in the way of the track or anything be sure that your server was centered before you install it in Double check. Just to avoid breaking anything when you put the screws in, I just heat up the plastic a little bit just so it's a bit more soft and it doesn't break when you screw it in. It's a good tip to keep in mind. Now I do offer some parts to make the front end complete, but truth be told, the one that's on there is actually pretty good from stock. So in this one, I decided to keep it simple and not change any parts from the front end. But it's the same process from uh, the RMK. So if you want to know about this, you could probably just watch the series on the RMK. Now I'm keeping the screw loose here because we're going to need to adjust the pinion and gear mesh properly later. So keep it loose for now and hand tight it later. Don't use a drill for this. This is just a test to see if everything runs nicely and no binding or anything. Now you'll need to take these off. That's a really important step. If you don't take these off and you run the track, there's a good chance it will bind on these parts and actually damage it. You don't need to take the little wedge at the back, but I'm taking it off. I'm not taking any chances. We'll block the hole later anyway. Now this is also one of the most important parts. These little pieces, they, they need to be reinforced with the screw, so put the screw inside. That's a very, very important step. Again, if you don't want to break plastic, it might be a good idea to preheat it with a torch so it doesn't break when you screw it. It has happened to me, but make sure it doesn't happen to you. Heat it up just a tiny bit so it doesn't break. Now this is a new part that's been released from the revision 6 of the parts. This is a tensioning system. Uh, it used to be just holes that you needed to change, but now you can just turn a screw and it adjusts the tension of the track. It's a great thing to have now. I'm just feeding up the little nubbin at the end, so uh, it's not coming out again.
and just like that you can screw and unscrew it. just simple as that Everything should be loose around it, so make sure nothing binds and everything's very fluid in this because it needs to move in the end. Now you'll need to also deburr this rod at the end to make sure the color fits it, so I, I didn't show it, but you need to take it off and grind it a little bit. Now to align the front swing arm, uh, I used to measure it, but now a good trick I've found is that you can simply use a half inch drill bit and you hit both walls and when you turn it makes a little mark and you know exactly where to drill it. It's a nice little trick I discovered, so saves a bit of time and you know, make sure it's lined up every single time. Drill it with a one inch drill bit. You'll need two of these parts and uh, the reason for this is that uh, you need one for the axle and one to reinforce it because just having the two screws would not do the job to hold it in place. Uh, the only difference though is that because of the shock setup I was using I had to split it in two. You'll see what I mean later. It was so smooth. Don't forget to put the colors on each side so it doesn't come off. Now here's a problem I actually found today while I was assembling it. Nobody actually told me that the logs were actually too long to fit inside the snowmobile. So what I had to do is just trim every single pieces until it fit uh, in the tunnel because this was hitting where the drive drum was. Parts from now on will be fixed, so don't worry about that. And to shut the door you just heat up the little nubbin and you push it in. As simple as that. I've seen a lot of people put the track backward. There is a way to put it for more durability and you won't get any more traction if you put it backward, but it will get damaged faster. Now upon reflection I maybe should have put the shocks in first. Uh, I didn't think I had some shocks laying around but I did. So I assembled the track prior to this but put the shocks in when you can, when it's easy. Don't do like I did. Everything should be super smooth. Nothing should bind or anything. Now here's how you tension the, the, the track, you just put, the, I think that's a 2.5mm key and you push it in through one of the holes in the track, there's a few pieces that have holes in it, and you can adjust it by turning counterclockwise to tension it and clockwise to loosen it a bit. I found a nice little string that I could use that was already the right length to use as a limiter strap, so that's what I did, and also I had some shocks I had laying around. Uh, I think the front one are hot racing 78 millimeters uh, and the rear is a G-Mate 75 millimeters. That's not normally what I'm using, but that's what I had. There's a wide range of shocks that can actually fit. Probably two 75 millimeter would work really nice. I would probably advise that you wait until you have the machine so you can measure it on the spot. Or maybe a 65 and an 80 millimeter would work really nice. Now I decided to keep the rear snow flap on this, uh, usually I'm taking it off, but on this one I decided to keep it to see what it does. 
since my track is not binding or anything, it stops at a very, very nice place and it doesn't hit any part of the top of the tunnel. So having it in and just heat it up to bend it a bit, I think it will look really nice and it's not in a way or anything. So. Now I put a tape inside to cover the holes we drilled earlier, but it, it's not permanent because the track would rip it off. So what you need to do is put the tape underneath so it makes a nice little bowl so you can put the epoxy in. And that's probably the easiest way to do it. And then once the epoxy dries, you can just take the tape off. I decided to go old school with this machine and uh, go with the FM radio with this. So it has a long antenna at the back and that's what I had on hand. So that's why I used it. Now something really important most people don't do is to actually make some ventilations and some holes so that the cool air from the outside can cool the electronics because it, re it gets really toasty in there after a little while. Make sure it's well ventilated. And by the way, since you've all assembled your snowmobile right now, take it all apart and put grease everywhere there's metal. You might as well do it now because nobody likes rusty bearings. I'm actually impressed because I started filming this video this morning at 8.30 and the machine was still in its box. And now it's 6pm and the machine is actually complete, which is very surprising in my opinion. I didn't know I could pull it off in a day. That includes filming and editing. Just for laughs and giggle, I decided I was going to try to see what the stock uh, lithium battery would do with a speed controller. So that's how I hooked it up. Let's see what it does. Wow, the battery was fully charged and now it's completely empty. <laughs> okay, not quite sure what happened here, but let's not use that battery. Truth be told, I have no idea where to put the battery on this machine. Uh, normally, I'm drilling out the seat and making some space, but since I'm not going to be keeping it, whoever is going to get this machine could put the battery wherever he wants. So I'm not going to drill anything. I'm just going to leave it at, at whoever buys it. So thanks, everyone, for standing by for this 18-minute uh, video. I know I'm not usually doing this kind of video, but there's going to be a few videos uh, actually quite long coming up soon so uh, this is kind of the first one of these um they're all very nice to watch but something different <laughs> so the kit should be back in stock very soon uh within a couple hours uh, also revision 7 is on the way so it shouldn't be too long before you have access to some new parts uh, one of them is the bomber skid so very much more durable than what's normally available so I've seen some people, you know, doing some pretty wild things with these machine and jumping some parts that shouldn't be jumped and landing weird. So uh, there's going to be uh, some reinforced kid coming up, as well as some parts that just have some little tweaks here and there. So once again, thanks everyone for your time, and uh, I hope you have a wonderful sledding season. And if you feel like it, take some time to have a look at my website and see what's available that you'd like. Have a wonderful day.